See, the soul, I'm going to just, the soul is here and the soul is in a body. Now, the body is what the soul uses to function, normally speaking. So I'm talking, I'm using my uh, throat and my speaking capacity. And that's how we normally function. Now, sometimes some of our bodily capacities can deteriorate and will become dysfunctional. So for example, some people may lose their power of speaking. Some people may, may there's an accident in which they lose their legs then they can't walk. Somebody may be a surgeon and they lose their hands in accident. They can't, they can't do anything. So the soul's capacity to function can be sometimes limited by the body. You know, the body's capacity is going smaller. So I show the body smaller over here. So now this can happen in various ways. But the most impairing is when the brain's capacity decreases. So how it is that you can say the soul is here. Then, this, if I then to put it another way, the body is here. And the soul is linked to the body through the mind. And if I take this further, the soul is here. The mind is here. And now, if I make this a little bigger, this is the body. And here, the interface of the mind with the body is the brain. So now the soul is the source of consciousness. The consciousness comes consciousness comes through the soul from the soul, through the mind, through the body to the outer world. So if my eyes were damaged then the, the light, so consciousness is like, say, a flashlight. You know, it's a light of awareness. So if I had a flashlight over here, the light comes out over here like this. So like that, the soul's consciousness comes from the mind through the body. And now if my eyes were blinded, then I can't see. But the light of awareness is still coming. Uh, the conscious and the current of, let's not use the word light, because you're blind, talking about blindness. The current of consciousness as an energy so awareness is coming and sometimes people who are blind they may have acute very sharp hearing that consciousness is there and they can hear and they can discern by that but so when one organ is damaged the consciousness is still coming through the body and functioning through other lips but what happens is when the brain is damaged the brain is deteriorated this consciousness is coming it comes still here it doesn't come over here or you can say it comes dotted. Like people who also have dementia, sometimes they have phases of lucidity. It's like almost like the old person we knew is back. And then within minutes, they're just gone again. So now we can say that the body that we have with all its resources, the body is like a rented vehicle. And the body that we have, it's a rented vehicle, which we have for a particular amount of time. And that this vehicle that we have is based on our past karma. So sometimes this rented vehicle will be taken away from us. When it's completely taken away, that's the time of death. But even before that, sometimes some parts of the vehicle may stop working. So at that time, as you rightly said, so all, I gave all philosophical discussion. So at that time, we understand that this person, now the bodily functionality or even the say, neural functionality in this case has decreased substantially. But so that is an opportunity for us to render service, for us to take care of that person. And the important thing is that the soul so, so at a physical level, we can do certain things for them, but maybe dementia is irreversible. We can't do much for them. But at the level of the soul, we can always benefit them. So, so if there are spiritual vibrations, so if there is spiritual stimuli, 
then that can actually benefit the soul. That can awaken the soul. That's why if there is some spiritual sound like the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra or a spiritual ambience is created with some, uh, some sacred imagery or a sacred uh, aromas, um, sacred fluids. So then what will happen by that is they will benefit at a spiritual level. The body is at a level of irreversible damage now. But the soul is going to continue to exist. And the soul can be awakened even at that time. And that the, wherever their soul goes after this particular body engagement, there they will be more awakened, they will be more elevated. And we can see this not just as an opportunity for service, we can actually see such a situation as an opportunity for selfless service. Because what happens is normally, whenever we do anything for someone, we expect that person to do something for us in return. You know, we do something for them, we expect them at, at the very least, they should appreciate us, they should thank us. And yes, that is that is that is natural human expectation. But we grow when we learn selfless service. And so, so we can see this as an opportunity to, to grow spiritually by learning the virtue, the learning the value of selfless service.